It was the most powerful, fastest wave I have ever ridden. But now, I've got two 25-foot waves coming toward me and the craggy cliff in front of me. I know I'm gonna die. Rick grew up on the northern beaches, but his family actually came from England. And he was left-handed and dyslexic growing up. And in those days, they used to cane children that used their left hands to make them use their right hand. And often when he went home, his father also tried to kill him, so he decided he just didn't go home and didn't go to school. So he went surfing into the cinema instead, and that's where he got his life education from. People that haven't been to school like me have to live off their wits. Instinct will tell you how to live your purpose and how to ride a 30-foot wave. I had such a great trust in instinct because I practiced that every day. I was looking to be in poetry with nature, doing extreme things every day and learning to trust that. I was living the phenomena, doing things all the time without thinking about it. I wanted to live life. I didn't want to hear someone telling me about life. I love waking up in the morning thinking about life of something I've put together in my unconscious while I was asleep so then I could wake up and live that dream and do it. So on that day, I was 22. My agent called me to play King Arthur to be in London on Monday. And on my way through, I stopped at Town Head to check out the sea. It was just mist. You couldn't see anything as you looked out to sea. And then there was this noise that was like you've never, I have never, ever heard noise like it. It was like cannons, the biggest cannons you've ever heard. You <laughs> And then there's a dot a dot that just started to open up and it was the most beautiful picture. The sun was in the right hand side, the, the, the sea was mixed in and this wave rolled in and I thought, God, wow, what's that? Now the Cribber is a well-known surf spot, also known as the Widowmaker. Back then, these waves had never been surfed before and I didn't even know it. I've seen these huge, perfect waves with nobody riding them. It was totally surreal. I was hypnotised and the words just slipped out of my mouth. Wow. I'd surf that and a boy standing next to me heard me and said, I'll go and get you a board. And then I was totally committed. I had no option. I had to go in. And three surfers uh, heard that I was going to surf the Cribber and decided they'd join me. Johnny McElroy, Peter Russell and uh, Jack Lidgate and Hawaiian. The boards at the time were single fin, basic, no leg ropes, they, and wetsuits weren't invented then. If something went wrong, there was no chance of rescue. It was super high risk. Word spread out by the time we were walking down the boat ramp. There was a hundred people there, old codgers, combis, and all sorts of cars. The car park was full and building. We were warriors, prepared to die, going into something that was like the land of the giants. And we, we, we walked down and not a word was spoken. Not a word. It was only when my toe hit the water, I felt the electricity and I know where I was heading. I paddled out towards the big break on the left and deep thought about my destiny. All I can hear of the noise of these giant Tsami waves hitting the cliff, horrifying. When the fog came back, I couldn't even see where my hands were going into the water. And I thought like in the desert, you could be going around in circles. I could be paddling into the rocks and I've doubly shitted myself. And the thing with Rick was he was so rebellious that every time he got hit or caned, he just was de totally determined not to cry. And he used that as fuel to to totally go out into the world and fuel his adventures. When the first wave comes, it doesn't matter how big it is, how blown up it is, whatever it is, I'm on it and I'm out of here. Like a taxi ride from death. 
but I'm paddling. I've got three strokes in, and I, I'm on. So I'm having the time of my life. I've forgotten all my troubles, all my fears, all the fogs. So I know I'm going home. And all of a sudden, corner of my eye, I see the cliff. I'm heading straight for the cliff. Horrified. I jump off my board, and as I'm sinking, trying to run away on water, I look back and I see my board being hurled at the cliff and smashing on the cliff. I see a fellow on the cliff drop his camera. Track it back like a flashback. I'm lining up for a tube ride into a cliff. What are the people on the headland thinking? How mad am I? There's two massive waves coming at me and I'm right in front of the craggy cliff wall. So I turn around and face the rock and within seconds you've computed every possibility of survival. And I said goodbye to God, you know, God help me, I'm gonna die. And I'm, so I'm quite resigned, I, I became quite calm. Then the wave I was on hits the cliff, creating this mighty rip, now carrying me at the same speed as the second wave, tubing right above my head. I'm, I'm thinking, there, Jesus, this, I'm here, I'm here. How long do I have to wait to die? And the rib has taken me to the calm of the harbour. I felt so uncool the way I came off my board by not knowing the cliff was there in the first place. I just walked up the boat ramp. People wanted to talk, but I just got in my car and drove off. I'm driving, I'm listening to music. I'm not hearing it right. I was shaking, I was giggling, I was nervous, I was crying, tears were coming to my eyes. Am I dead? And I, I really did think I was dead. Something had been branded in my mind, never to forget what happened that day as a total phenomena, a total phenomena. No other word for it. Rick's journey demonstrates that the phenomenality of life matches any belief, and that's exactly what the fuel of life delivers. It's not about right or wrong or good or bad. It's about growing and growing into being a new kind of human being. It's about learning from every single challenge or mistake we make. 2013, I was researching on my iPad that the big wave caught in Portugal, and my name came up. It was only then, 47 years later, did I realise I was a pioneer of big wave surfing in Europe. I was always prepared to die, and that's why I'm still alive. What's obvious now, but Rick wouldn't really have had any idea on the way, is that he had to go through all of those experiences and all of those tests because of the vulnerability and sensitivity of his own heart. But really what was going on was he was on his own true love quest because he was always looking for love. Rick says if he could do it, anyone can do it. He also says if he has to do it, everybody has to do it. Miracle Man! Rick Ryer surfed a bigger 30-foot wave in Newport, Australia, dislocating his shoulder. He drowned, then miraculously washed up later on the beach in what he recalls as just another phenomenality of life. But he came back from the dead to have a love affair with the world's most iconic 60s supermodel, Twiggy. Crazy Brave. After only two days learning to ski, he jumped 70 feet over Falls Creek to become a pre-Olympic downhill ski racing team trainer in Switzerland. Accidental prisoner. Rick was sentenced and carted off for 14 days in an Australian jail by corrupt police working for an infamous gangster. The reason? Rick was unknowingly dating the gangster's wife. Veteran of the 60s. He was in the epicenter of London's 1967 Summer of Love, of which he says, No one knows they witnessed to a revolution until after it's happened. Manure Magnate, crowned the king of food by the Australian media for pioneering hemp and the use of worms as recyclers of every kind of poo on the planet. All my life I lived like a dream. I never thought about it. I just wanted to do something amazing every day. Insane, I'm burning again, shaking the heavens, I dance when they pray. Phenomenal smile, I'm the king of my mind, spirits in pain, go extra mile. You gotta 
Everything. 